Hey guys, how are you doing today? Happy Friday. I hope that you are having an amazing Friday morning and that you are going to have an even more amazing weekend. I know that I'm excited. I don't think that Aaron and I have anything really planned, but I am so excited to get some reading done because I've really been slacking on reading. I think I've only read like four or five books this month and that's just not my usual so far this year. But April was a hard month and so I'm I'm hoping that I can, you know, rally at the end, but if not, I mean it's not the end of the world. So today I am bringing you the library 411 tag. I was tagged by Jashana and I will leave her Twitter and her YouTube channel as well as the original video down below and I'm super, super excited. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I'm hoping to put out even better content and how you know that I put it out is if you go and subscribe to me. So there are 13 questions, I believe, in the library 411 tag. I will be um, using my laptop to look down so if you see me looking down too much one let me know it down below because sometimes i'm like did i look down too much did i do something else too much you gotta let me know guys um but so the very first question all of these revolve around libraries and um sort of what you would find in your local library the very first question is information desk a book that was helpful to you um, for any reason. So you will notice that a lot of these books aren't necessarily cozies. Um, these are books that I had to, I actually thought really, really in depth about this whole entire tag. More than I normally think about tag questions, actually. So Joshana, thank you so much for, for tagging me in this because it was actually really hard to find books that answer these questions. So the very first book for um, a book that was helpful to you is The Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. Yes. So this is by um, Mark Manson, and it's a counterintuitive approach to living a good life. I don't know how much I can explain that this book really, really helped me, how much I can, you know, just reiterate. It's just, it's a fantastic book if you really need help trying to push yourself out of your comfort zone, how to stand up for yourself, and how to really live a life for yourself. But it's not a selfish book. It's, it's a book that shows you how to be kind, how to be a good person, but also to be a better you. And I, I really, really, really enjoyed um, this book. I actually found this book from Kaylin Nicholson. Um, if you watch her YouTube channel, I'm, you know, I love her channel. She's just fantastic. She has a lot of lifestyle things and I, I absolutely love her. And she talked about this book and then I read it. I really think I need to reread it and get a physical copy. And I think that I will be able to highlight some more and underline and things like that. So the subtle art of not giving a f yes. Question number two is the return bin. What are two books that you read and immediately wanted to return because you disliked them or a recent DNF? So there are two books that um, I had to actually go through my good reads of all the books that I have read to really be able to find the ones that I just, I couldn't do anything with. So the book that I'm going to talk about first is the one that I actually just finished. It's the last book I read this month and it's Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I got this book um, when in my book of the month club book and I was super excited because the last book of the month book that I got was The Broken Girls, which you guys know that I, I freaking loved that book. It was amazing and so I know that it's not the same author, but it was sort of in the same genre and sort of realm. And I was really, really excited. I thought that that was going to be an amazing book, but the book made me really uncomfortable. It, the characters were not really relatable and I got kind of annoyed with them. And the fact that it changed perspectives so many times that I couldn't really keep track. Like, I don't know, it changed perspectives like at least 
four or five times, which they did that in The Broken Girls, but the way that it was done in The Broken Girls made sense to me because it was in two different time periods and, and you knew, you could pick up on who it was. But then she was gone. It's about a missing 15 year old girl and how um, there's a secret with her missing and her, the mother finds out the secret after 10 years um, when she's dating a new man and meets his daughter who looks just like her daughter. And it was just, it, it, it was really, really weird. I wanted to really like it, but I just, I couldn't. It made me uncomfortable in certain parts. Um, the next book is my, uh, one of my favorite authors, Jennifer Crusey, Don't Look Down. Um, I absolutely love Jennifer Crusey. One of my favorite books by her is Welcome to Temptation and then Faking It. And um, there's all of these different types of books. I've read all of her books. And so I was actually super excited when I was at Gardner's last summer. It was actually right when I first started my booktube channel. And I was going through the hardback shelves and I was like, what? There's a new book or what, where is this? How did I not know this? And I read it and it just, it made me really, really disappointed in Crucy because she normally has such powerful female protagonists. And in this one, she was just, she was waiting for the guy to rescue her and it just, it really disappointed me. And so I did not like that book. Question number three is the holds section. Your most anticipated release, which you can't wait to get your hands on. And so that's going to, of course, be A Big Shot Mystery Till Death Do Us Tart by Ellie Alexander. It is the next installment in the Big Shot Mystery series. And two of my absolute favorite characters are getting married. And the whole town is in on it. And I'm just really excited to, to see what's going on in Jules's world and Helen's world and just all of it. So I'm super excited about that. It comes out in June. The fourth question is community classes and study rooms. A book you loved that was a school assignment. So one of my absolute favorite books is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. And I, I love this book. The way that the firefighter's role has changed from saving things from fires to burning books and whole entire worlds and... Um, that just, it really, really, really in, like instilled a love for reading even more than I already had. And I, I, I'm actually really, really excited that I think they're coming out with a movie or they're coming out with a show for Fahrenheit 451. And I am, I'm super, super stoked about it. Question number five is computers, a modern classic you love or a favorite sci-fi. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do both because there is a book that actually encompasses both a classic and science fiction. And that would have to be Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. She is actually the originator of the sci-fi series. She actually created science fiction as a genre. And I, I, I loved that. I took it for my, um, I read that book for my science fiction by women's course that I absolutely fell in love with. And I thought that the book, even though it was written, I think over a hundred years ago, that it was, it is still as captivating and as compelling and fascinating as it was then now. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really just, I love that book. Question number six is DVD rentals. Your most anticipated or favorite in recent history book to movie or book to TV adaptation or a book that felt cinematic or a book you wish would be adapted into a movie or series. So I'm actually choosing a, a series or a book that should be turned into sort of like a mini series. You guys see Cleo over there? She's just like, Hey mom, what's up? Hey mom, what's, what's, what's up? And I'm like, come on, come on. Cleo, hi. Mm. She's purring, she's so sweet. All right, so the series is the Black Jewel series by Anne Bishop, which is right here. The first one is Daughter of the Blood, and it's all about a dark kingdom sort of preparing itself for a new prophecy that's coming. Um, women actually have the magical abilities, and men aren't allowed to have them. Um, it's they're, they're 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 getting an arrival of a new queen and it's a witch who would will wield more power than even the high lord of hell himself but 
what's awesome is that uh, the potential queen is a child and you go through and watch sort of the transformation of the political parties and houses and things like that. But I feel like the magic system, the characters, and the cinematic just feel of this series would be perfect for like a mini series on Netflix or on Hulu. Number seven, it's a library bookstore sale. Um, a random book you picked up without knowing anything about and really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna have to choose The Backstagers. So The Backstagers is a comic series. And the reason why I fell into it is I actually actually was at Comic-Con um, in the summer of 2016 and I was super excited because of all of the book stalls that they had and I came upon um, the boom box uh, sort of um, stall right and it was so bright and brilliantly colored and just all of that and I was drawn to it immediately and I'd always been wanting to read Lumberjanes which is actually the very first video that I made for my YouTube channel so I made so I got the um, the big version of Lumberjanes and then as I was about to walk away I saw the backstagers and I was like what's this I loved the bright pinks and I loved that it was just a whole bunch of boys in theater and it just I loved reading the the characters come together and become a family and the crushes that developed and just all of that I just I I, I really really loved this series number eight teen youth room your favorite YA or favorite book you read as a kid or a book you can't wait to share with your future kids nieces or nephews so my nephew is seven years old and his name is Michael Scott and I am super excited to show him the um, Among the Hidden series so this is a series all about where third children are illegal that you're only allowed to have two children and it's all about the movement of third children rising up and kind of realizing that they are worth more than what society believes them to be. And I read this to my fifth graders, um, all seven books for five years. And it was, it's, it's really, really, really amazing, especially because you can tie it to how China only has a certain limit of children and how this isn't such a, a, a fictional setting that it could actually be put within real life. So I'm really excited to share that with Michael Scott. Number nine is Museum Tickets, a book that made you feel a bit more cultured upon completing it. And that would have to be And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I just feel like if you read an Agatha Christie book, you're like a little bit like smarter, like I think a little bit more brilliant. I don't, I, I'm not quite sure. It's really hard for me to read a lot of classics. And so when I finished And Then There Were None, I was, I was super, super happy with myself. And the fact that I couldn't figure out the whodunit and the fact that Agatha Christie is the mother of Cozy Mysteries helped quite a bit. So I, I really enjoyed that book. Number 10, Overdrive and Hoopla, an audiobook you love. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. That is actually um, read aloud by Will Wheaton, who was the most perfect person to read that book, if you ask me. Aaron and I listened to the book as we were going down to Texas to get on our cruise for spring break, and I loved it. That book was absolutely amazing. Will was like on spot with his, um, just the way he, he voiced things and his fluency and I just, I loved the emotion. It was, it was really, really good. Question number 11 is request a purchase, a lesser known book that you want more people to know about and read. Now I know this isn't necessarily lesser known because there was a movie about it, but it's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I really, really, really loved this book. I read all five books together in The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and I I feel like the the characters could have been known more about and like I just I feel like people would really really enjoy sort of the episodic feel of the series and I just I thought it was hilarious and just quirky and fun to read and I don't hear a lot of people talking about this book as much I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about it people quote the movie all the time but I don't feel like they actually know what the book is about so Question number 12 is librarians, a character who loved helping others. And this counts, okay? So I love Avatar The Last Airbender. 
seriously love Avatar The Last Airbender. And for Christmas a couple of years ago, Aaron got me the search and I, I was so happy because there were so many unanswered questions at the end of Avatar The Last Airbender. They're like, what happened to Zuko's mom, which the search goes through. And, and there are more. I actually, I'm not even kidding, checked out the um, rest of the books from my library where I work. So I work at the high school in my town. And hold on, I checked out Avatar The Last Airbender, The Rift. I checked out The Promise and I checked out Smoke and Shadow. I haven't read them yet, but I'm super, uh, I'm super excited to hopefully sit down and read them soon so that I can check them back in and actually students can, you know, read the books that, you know, they're there for. And the final question, question number 13 is Sanctuary. A book that is your safety net is like home and helped you through a rough time. So I know that this is without a doubt a cliche answer, but I have my reasons. So the Harry Potter series, and I'm not saying because it helped me through my teenage years, because I mean it did, but it's how it kept my family together. So growing up, my mom got very sick. And when I mean sick, I mean sick, sick. Like, became where the doctors didn't know what was wrong with her and just kept giving medicine and kept giving medicine and she, she wasn't herself. And one of the only ways that we were able to really connect with each other was through reading Harry Potter. And it's not just with her, but my whole entire family. So every time there was a new movie that came out, we watched, we went to the midnight release, new book, midnight release, stay home the next day of school. We would read it together, we'd talk about it. And I really, really think that the reason why we were able to keep the relationship that we have is because we were able to connect through Harry Potter, through, through all of it. And so, Sorry to get real serious on you guys, but that that is why Harry Potter is so important to me. And it's not just, you know, the love of the characters and, and, and everything because they're amazing, but it was the ability to have a connection with my mom through a time where she wasn't able to be herself because of everything that the doctors were doing. And she is better now but she's still not 100% um, from what those doctors did. And so it, I know that we will always be able to connect through Harry Potter. So um, got real deep right there. Sorry guys, you know, normally it's perky and happy here. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was the library 411 tag. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that, you know, if you guys do it, um, please, you know, let me know you're tagged. I don't, I don't have anybody specifically to tag, but you're tagged. You're totally tagged. And um, I hope to see you guys next week. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.